Food Heals Podcast, episode 106. Now, the Food Heals Podcast. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Welcome, Vince. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's going in, right? <laughs> I didn't even know you were recording that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. Today's guest is Vince Leah, the artist formerly known as Healthy Vegan Guy. <laughs> We're so excited to have Vince back on the show for a fourth time. This time he's just going by his name and not Healthy Vegan Guy. That's all. Oh my God, we've had him on four times. He is a favorite. Vince is so genuine. Yeah. He joins us today to tell us about his new line of gorgeous ethical t-shirts that promote veganism. But before we get to our interview with Vince, we've got to tell you about today's sponsor. Our sponsor today is the Global Healing Center. I don't think Food Heals Nation has ever heard of them, have they? No, never. Not by us. No, 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 no. <laughs> Global Healing Center was founded by Dr. Group, who is just such an amazing guy. And he promotes the holistic way of life that we promote. And so all their products, like whenever I need something, I just... Just go and I see if Global Healing Center has it because I know if they carry it that it's trusted. Like I get all my digestive enzymes from them. Everyone knows I get the parfait massage from them. The Everyone wrinkle. knows I love the Aqua Spirit refreshing <laughs> spray. <laughs> yes, exactly. I just got their NutriCool. It's uh, something you rub on aches and pain. So like I've been doing this intense Pilates lately. So the NutriCool is like what you rub when you're really sore. So that's been great. Love their products. Yeah. So you can get 20% off any Global Healing Center product by going to globalhealingcenter.com and using the coupon code food heals next up our interview with vince the food heals podcast starts now today we're here with a great guest he's back for his fourth time on the food heals podcast vince leah vince grew up in an italian family surrounded by different cheeses deli meats and desserts he felt he couldn't live without but after being diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, Vince embarked on a journey to heal himself. After being prescribed pill after pill and trying various other diets unsuccessfully, Vince began incorporating green juice into his life. And of course, you know, we love the green juice. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and Vince began to notice a significant improvement in his health. It's an amazingly inspiring story. So go back and listen to episode two. That's right, episode two, to yeah. hear how he overcame his condition. And you can also check out episode 18, where he shared his tips on how to do what you love and be an eco-entrepreneur like Susie, like myself. Or you can go back to episode 29, where you can listen to Vince co-hosting an episode with me when Susie was out of town on The Science of Veganism with Matt Rosigno. So without further ado, here's our interview with Vince. Now, the Food Heals Podcast. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Welcome, Vince. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's going in, right? <laughs> I didn't even know you were recording that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's our brand new in in intro done by Vince Leah at VinceLeah.com. Also, a voiceover artist. Did you know, Susie? Oh. It's, it's my new thing. Cool. I think that's, you know, maybe that's what I'm going to become now. Yeah, maybe I'll you should. Susie can teach you. That's what she you. does. I do, actually. I teach I know. Do I have to do the whole radio DJ voice? No. There's, no. No, that's out. That is oh, so, that is so that's like, so like, 10 years ago. That's 2015, like, huh? Less. <laughs> <laughs> farther, farther back. It's like, you know, like, if you listen to radio ads, you know, it's all like, Real voices talking about real products and problems. Like it's like not the announcer that you used to think, like yeah, that we that we grew the up brand with. Brand new so like <laughs> in a world in a world. No, that's out. That's done. But have you seen that movie, Susie? Because it's really funny. In Do you a know world, what? I haven't, and that's so silly. But I know what it's about. You've and got I, to see it. And I t I know Tig Notaro was in it. And I saw her documentary and her her whole story. So yeah. like I know I know what it's about. And I was at Sundance when it premiered. Oh, I just really? didn't get in to see it because yeah. it was like they're hard to get into. It's hard to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good film. Everyone should see it. I mean, even if you're not into into voiceover world, it's still really funny. Yeah. Okay. 
Welcome back, Vince. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Thanks Vince. for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so, for anyone who didn't have a chance to listen to episode, I believe two. You I was going to say, on, was uh, Vince our first actual like? He was our first. No, no, he was our second. He obviously. was our second guest because Stephanie was our first. So, yeah, you were number two. Uh-huh. So I'm number two. <laughs> <laughs> Better than number three. <laughs> and now we're over 100 episodes, you guys. So Woo-hoo! crazy. That is crazy. I know. Thanks for coming back, Vince. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love hanging out with you girls. Yeah. It's fun. It's a good. I love what you guys are doing. And that was a random whistle. <laughs> that wasn't me. It was craziness. Well, sometimes there's strange sounds in this neighborhood. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone who didn't get to hear episode two, and of course, we highly encourage everyone to go back and listen, but if you don't have a chance right now, can you just tell everyone your story as quickly as possible in terms of like how you healed yourself and how you got to be here today? Yeah, no problem. So basically, it was about, geez, 11, oh, 10 years ago, mm-hmm. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Mm-hmm. Didn't know where to go, didn't know where to turn. Doctors were basically saying, try this, it didn't work. Try this, it didn't work. So eventually, I just kind of wanted to take control of what I was doing. Yeah. And a couple of my friends had started green juice. And they're like, oh, you should try this vegan diet. And I was, and at that point, I tried so many different things. Like, the vegan diet seemed easy to me. I was right. like, okay. Well, you, you had been to hell and nothing back. to lose. Yeah, like, what do I have to lose? It's like eating healthy, right? So I remember just, like, not even wanting to have a green juice. Because the food I had had during this whole time was basically, you know, rice <laughs> and meat and bread and it was heavy animal products yeah. some cheeses and so standard american diet yeah yeah and you're told don't have a lot of vegetables and don't have a lot of raw vegetables because they are for your body to digest right. and you know you your you inflammation going on and the colon and everything so that's what i did and i had I hadn't had a salad i hadn't had green juice so I remember like going to get my first green juice and I was like, oh, like I stayed home the whole day because I was just waiting for like <laughs> problems, you know, because I had right. this green juice right. and it was fine. And so then I just, you know, after that I was having a green juice every day and then I'm like, well, maybe I'll try a salad and just slowly um, incorporated more plants into my diet and started phasing out all dairy, all meat. Fish was like the last thing to go when mm-hmm. I discovered, I started doing some research on protein because i figured oh i need i still need to have fish for the protein then you discover all the plant-based proteins that are available to you Mm -hmm. and so i just got rid of that and started going fully vegan and i'm still on some medications but i've avoided all the the heavy medications that they wanted to prescribe to me i was actually on the way down to get one my first iv Mm -hmm. uh, a dose of remicade and they sound serious yeah it was uh you get it through an iv i forget how many times they were gonna have me go and doctor calls me because you have to do a bunch of tests before you can get this start this these medications because it really suppresses your immune system so they want to make sure everything's okay because once you go on it you know you're you're vulnerable to a lot of do they think that ulcerative colitis is autoimmune it is autoimmune it is yeah i would not have thought that Mm -hmm. i would have thought otherwise yeah so okay, it's, okay. So, so it's like so all these tests were done. She called me and she goes, "We found something on your lung. Don't get your treatment. Uh, Remicade today." And I was like, "Okay. Well, I guess if you get an infection on your lung, it leaves a scar there, mm-hmm. and that doesn't go away." Well, I had something. I had a test, or I think it was an image done on the lung, and they saw something. They didn't know if it was an active scar or an old scar. So they had to do some more tests and find out. So right. during this time of don't get your thing till we're going to postpone it, that's when I started juicing and feeling better and doing all these things. So when it came time to like reschedule, I was like, I don't think I need this. Good for you. And the doctor was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, you know, let's just, I'm, I'm feeling better. Let's continue what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was, she was open to it. She was the third doctor that wow. I had, had, yeah. but she was very open to, you know, finding what works well for you. That's so you know, nice to Reducing hear. stress. And so then I just, you know, every year I have to have a colonoscopy just to check. Mm-hmm. And things were, as long as things, things were always getting worse every colonoscopy. And then right after that, it's kind of like flatlined where it was like, okay, it's not getting any worse. And then it started getting better. That's so amazing. I just kept doing what I'm doing. 
And um, I don't remember if we talked about this last time, but I know that you switched to a fully vegan diet and juicing and that was a huge help. And I was wondering, did we go into, did you reduce your stress? Did you do any emotional healing? Was there any other component? I don't think we touched on that. And there were some things in my life, for instance, I was going through, I just had gone through a divorce mm. personally. And I was trying, I think stress caused the colitis in the beginning. Sure. So I really tried hard to manage stress. That's important to bring up to our listeners because in my experience, the first place that stress goes is your gut. Yeah. I mean, the gut the is like this, it's like... It's like the center of everything mm-hmm. stress related and yeah. emotional. Yeah. And you have your all of your shock, your your base chakras right under. You know what I mean? Right there. It's like it's all really base emotions, and that's in my experience as a body worker in my own personal experience. You know, when I'm upset, that's that's for me. I mean, my neck and my shoulders get tense, and then my stress goes to my tummy. Well, yeah. that's think about it. That's why it's called gut feeling. Sometimes you have a gut feeling, right? Right. And when you get embarrassed, when you get scared, where do you feel it? In yeah. your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> and and we've talked about this on the podcast, Vince. I don't know what you feel about this, but like embryology, when our cells are first forming in utero, the way that the nervous system forms or the, you know, there's cells that start to form and begin the basis of what's going to be the nervous system, the digestive system, the musculature, and the gut cells, the what's going to become the gut cells come from the brain tissue. So did you know that? I had, I had no idea. Yeah. This is really fascinating. And I learned wow. this, I learned this in massage school because when they talk about gut, like all of those things, they're meaningful. So yeah. when gut feeling like, that and and in lower life forms that we are evolutionarily tied to, it's the same thing. It's like when they're when they don't have as much of a varied body as we do. The it's the same kind of thing. The cells come from they're tied together. I can't. I'm not going to say that the the gut cells come from brain <laughs> tissue, but the the basis of the cells they separate. One forms the brain. One forms the gut. And they're connected. So yeah. there's actually like a ne- there's actually like a neurological connection between our gut feelings mm. and our brain. Did wow. you, you didn't know that? I had no. no. You, you should you should look into I'm it. I'm going to definitely. It's check very that out. fascinating. I and knew about the nervous how the nervous system was all tied in to the gut, but I didn't know the connection to the brain. That's, that's where it that's starts. Pretty fascinating. That's where it starts, and that's why you know animals like if they feel fear, the first thing they do is they kind of you know urinate or evacuate yeah. their bowels. There's a reason because it's all con- it's all connected and it's very basic. Wow. Yeah. It's so interesting. And I know we had Jill and Karen on recently, Susie, and I'm probably going to misstate what they said. But remember that how they said that serotonin that was produced in, in the, the gut. gut. And so there's a very strong connection between depression and problems in the gut. Which I had never heard of before. And I've suffered from depression. And that was fascinating to yeah. me because... Again, going back to what I just said about where the the gut cells form, it's like that makes so much like the more you the more you delve in, it all makes so much sense, but we're not told about it. We're told this is separate from that. Exactly. Yeah. Your That's- depression is in your head and you need a you need a, you know, serotonin reuptake inhibitor versus no, you need some probiotics and yes. you need to like clean out your tummy and get colonics. It- Probiotics fast, could cure your depression. Who knows? That I, I didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> it's really well, that's funny because I always tell people that like this condition, colitis, Crohn's or whatever condition you have in your gut, it's almost like a mental challenge just as much as it is physical. Mm-hmm. Because when you have an episode, when you have a flare, when I have an upset stomach, the first thing that hits me is, oh, I'm going through one of, you know, I'm going to have, I flash back to the pain I was in and what mm-hmm. I went through before and it really plays with your psyche of, oh, my God, this is happening again. And you start stressing out and mm-hmm. you think about what happened. And am I going to have to go through that again? Am I really getting better? Am I getting worse? Like, sure, it, it plays with everything. So it probably ties into that connection. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Absolutely. It's- and there's muscle memory and, we, you know, like so much. And then now we're going into like law of attraction or creating your reality with, you know, like your brain. Yeah, really. But it's all tied together. You know, so it's it's like you're almost like, oh, no, I'm going to prevent this by thinking about it. I'm going to relive this experience. It's like, no, you're in the present. It's so fascinating to me. It really does all connect. And it kind of blows my mind. I have to dive into that a little more, though. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, I met a woman this weekend and she completely healed her autoimmune through her thoughts. 
And I know it sounds a little woohoo and a little crazy, but she told me her story and I was just completely blown away. And we're gonna, definitely going to have her on the podcast. So stay tuned for that. But you know, the mind body connection is so strong. You know, you can change your diet, you got to change your thoughts too. You can change your thoughts, but I think you got to change your diet too. Like it's all connected. Well, who said, uh, yeah, totally. Like, but who said we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are? Who said that? Oh, that's a good one. I'll look it up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So going back to your story. So you were able to get to the place where you are now, which is like you live a normal life where you couldn't live a normal life before, right? Yeah. Okay, great. And so you're a vegan and you transformed your healing story into your business, into your brand. Tell Mm -hmm. us about that transition and, and really what you're doing today. Well, originally I just started... When I first became vegan, I noticed there was a lot of junk food vegan out there. Yeah. There was a lot of processed food. and Because you can be a very unhealthy vegan. Exactly. Veganism isn't the answer to health. It is a plant-based, healthy (laughs) vegan diet. Whole whole foods. Whole foods. Exactly. Exactly. Good. good. Yeah. Let's say say the whole thing. Whole foods, plant-based, vegan vegan diet diet. is the most healing (laughs) diet that we know of on the planet. Got it. Okay. (laughs) So just saying like you're a vegan sometimes i wanted to be like okay we well, need to be healthy at the same time so i just randomly started like cooking food and posting it on my personal facebook page and i was like this is getting kind of boring people are probably you know this guy <laughs> just posting food pictures all the time <laughs> i was like okay maybe i'll start an instagram account so i was like what am i going to call myself okay healthy vegan guy so i just started healthy vegan guy started posting stuff on instagram noticing people like were commenting and liking so i was like oh okay i'll post more food pictures and then it just kind of went from there where I started the website and the Facebook page and everything was under Healthy Vegan Guy, which was great. And that's how I was, I presented myself for, you know, about a year. I think when I was, when I first was on this podcast, yep. Healthy Vegan Guy, yep. and I told the story, then it was, when you would go to events, it was weird being talked to as people would say, hey, Healthy Vegan Guy. And I'd be like, I'm Vince. Right, right. I'm, I'm not you know, <laughs> no, you're it. not. You're a healthy vegan guy. <laughs> or, I, or I'd go to grab like a cookie or a piece of cake and they're like, oh, you can't have that. What are you doing, you're healthy, vegan, healthy guy? vegan guy? You know, it's like, oh, okay, someone's got to change here because I really want that cookie that's staring at me. You know? You're like, back off. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve a cookie. <laughs> so it, w- it was more like I've always preached balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously those things are okay in moderation. You know, if you want to have some processed food every now and then enjoy it, just don't do it every every day. And I really just wanted to make my brand more approachable, make people know me as Vince rather than healthy vegan guy, Mm -hmm. rather than if I'd go out with my buddies and they say, oh, what's your handle or what's, you know, oh, I'm healthy vegan guy. Oh, you just have kale salad all day. (laughs) It's like, well, not exactly, but have a lot. Where I wanted people to say, okay, cool, Vince Leah. And so I was trying to think of a new name. And I was like, I'm just going to use my name. Yeah. You know, Vince Leah. So I changed the website from healthyveganguy.com to vincelia.com. And I rebranded some of the social medias to the Vince Leah because there's another Vince Leah out there. He plays soccer in Europe. I know. That's what I was going to say. I'm surprised that you were able to get those handles because there's a if you Google it, there's a <laughs> soccer player that comes up. So yeah. now you're going to be beating him. I know. I got I to gotta improve my, uh, my SEO on that. I, I have a question for you, Vince. Yeah. Was there any kind of hesitation or kind of thoughts behind like, oh, well, you know, but from going from healthy vegan guy to making you your oh, yeah. your brand and like what does that mean? And there were a few thoughts. One, it's like, am I going to come across as egotistical because I'm like yep. talking about my name all the time? Well, and no. people were like, it's your name. You should be proud of it. Right. And once I think people see the watch the videos on YouTube and this, it's like, okay, this guy's not like yeah. It wasn't all about me. It was yeah. just, how am I going to present myself to people that don't know me? I I asked because I myself, throughout my life, have been an actress and a voiceover artist. And and when I first started my own website for myself, I was like, who am I? Like, you know, like, I played these characters, whatever, but I'm not, I don't have, I don't have, you know, I'm not a name. Like, why am I going to? And it took me a really long time to get there. So I was just wondering what your process was. Well, originally it was, I think I was talking about it in December, January. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to rebrand to Vince Lee in like three to five years. Right. Mm-hmm. By March, it was done. Like, yeah. I was just like... It, you did it quickly. It, it was like... That's great, like, though. That means like you went like... Well, I figured it's like the further I, longer I waited, the harder it was going to be to make the change. Right, right, right. Wasn't yeah. the idea born in this room? Weren't we having a meeting? 
Yes, it was. Yep. Yes, we were having a it was little in December. Uh, strategy session. Yes. Oh, and I was talking about maybe memory. possibly going to Vincelia. <laughs> yep. And, and I remember you were a little bit stressed out about it. Like you were very concerned with what that would do. Well, too, because if you hear healthy vegan guy, you know I'm healthy, you know I'm vegan, yep. you know I'm a guy. You hear Vince Lea is like, who are you? What do you do? I don't yeah. know nothing about right, you based right. on your name. And I think some people question, like when I made the change, like, yeah, there's some people that just like stopped following me. Like I had like a lot of unfollows when I mm-hmm, changed it to mm-hmm. Vince Lea. And I was just like, okay, well, that's, that's cool. You know, yeah. you just have to deal with that. But I think people question, like some people ask me, are you still vegan? I was like, yeah, I'm Vince Leah was yeah. vegan as healthy vegan. Guy, and I'm still Vince Leah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, a couple things deal with that, but overall, you know, it's been fun because I feel like I could do so much more now. Yeah. And it's not like in a box. I think that's really important to note that, like, because I always in my mind think that I start from a certain point and everything should ascend at a success rate of a what would that be 45 degrees Mm -hmm. right like it should just go up and up and up like shoot up and it should just stay that way and that's not how life works sometimes it goes up and then you have lose some Mm -hmm. follows and then Uh it goes way up you know and it's that's yeah that's very true well what i did was i was at holistic voice i was at food heals i was at food heals film i always had all these names and then food heals nation now with the podcast and so i was never settled on anything i had all these domains and all these things and you know i just decided to recently to kind of go along what vince did and make everything either food heals nation because that's Susie and i and then everything that's mine alice and melody tv and so i'm in the process of dropping my other handles but it's hard because I'm like, am I going to lose people? But at the same time, I just got to start somewhere. Yeah. So I'm starting here. And like I switched over my Snapchat and no one came over. And then all of a sudden, everyone came over. <laughs> <laughs> that's so gro- that's took- gross, though. Yeah. You know, but it only took a week. And not that I only have like, you know, 25 Snapchat followers. It's not a big deal. But it took a week for them to all come over. And I was like, come on, guys. Like, I'm over here now. You gotta follow me. <laughs> because just like everything else, I have to be able to tell people how to find me on these social media mediums. I want to say everything's at Alice and Melody TV for me. Everything's at Food Heals Nation for the podcast. And Susie and I were lucky enough. We got everything at Food Heals Nation. But someone already owns Alice and Melody. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's for a baby because on um, Instagram, if you, if you do hashtag. <laughs> You're Alice, competing with a baby. <laughs> competing with a baby. I have to win against that damn baby. <laughs> Wait, can I buy your handle? How old are you? I know. <laughs> probably could but I think a mother named her child Allison Melody because there's pictures of a pregnant woman and, and and everything and it's hashtag Allison Melody so I'm like oh shit yeah you don't want to yeah yeah TV's good yeah I took TV because I'm like well that's what I do so okay so the quote that we were talking about earlier we don't see or that I was talking about <laughs> yeah we don't see things as they are we see them as we are Anais Nin wait what say it say it more slowly we don't see things as they are we see them as we are Yes, so true. Anias Nin. Am I saying mm. her name right? Anias. Yeah. It sounds lovely, however you're saying. Thank you. No, that's, <laughs> that's so true because anytime you're angry with someone, it's just a mirror of what 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 are you angry at yourself about? Yeah. Anytime you're judging someone, what are you judging yourself for? Or even what you were just talking about where your Snapchats weren't coming over in terms of the as fast as you needed them to yeah, come over yeah. for your ego. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was ego. And then they did. Yep, yeah, that's true. But in the meantime, you're like, why aren't they doing What's going on? What's yeah. happening? They don't really like me. Going, <laughs> it went backwards. Yeah. Uh. Well, so you have to, like you said, you have to take that step backwards. Yeah. To yeah. Go forward. You know, you have to realize where you are, where you want to go. Yeah. All right. So you have a beautiful new website, vincelia.com, and you just started a t-shirt line. Yes. Yes. I I was um, trying to figure out, there's not a lot of shirts out there that are geared toward guys and fitness and and vegan at the same time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I noticed when I was talking to guys is that when I was coming at them as healthy vegan guys, sometimes that's a turn off. I mean, I was proud to be vegan. I still am. Mm -hmm. But in order to reach guys and talk to them about food and the healing properties and what you guys are all talking about on all these different podcasts, to come at them as Vince Leah, they were much more receptive. Mm -hmm. And so then I started, I was brainstorming to see, okay, what can I call this line? And it was fit from food because I started becoming more aware of physical fitness and food and fitness go hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. Yeah. 
and it just it came naturally fit from food i and love fit from food yeah it was great and you know, the website was taken so, of course so. of course <laughs> <laughs> but but so you, I, you can still have that as a brand even if the website is taken. it's just under vince leah yeah exactly so Perfect. it's just vince leah and eventually it'll become vince leah slash fit from food but right now it's just under vince leah slash shop or mm-hmm, just, mm-hmm. you can just click the shop link on the website but it was just branded toward athletics, just fun. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, okay, like I don't want somebody to go over there if they're female. And then they was like, okay, there's no female shirts. It's yeah. men. You got to so have I, some tanks for the I girls. Have some tanks. Yep. That was actually your idea. Yay. Because I was like, what do you guys think about this thing? And you're like, it would look good in a tank. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and it does. It looks very good. I would definitely wear that tank to yoga or like out just to hang out. It's like a hangout tank. Yeah, they're really comfortable. So I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on them. So, but yeah, so I just wanted to create it that's sports related. So I have right now I have just fit from food t-shirts. I do have one that says vegan. Uh, I have some ba- a basketball shirt as well. And I'm going to be coming out with uh, football and, and baseball as well. And cool. I was thinking of new designs. One, just a fitness one, like a weightlifter. He's like flexing with a carrot. Mm-hmm. I saw that. I love know? that. <laughs> that seems to be the most popular one with the guys. Oh, really? Yeah, they really like that one. Nice. But yeah, so it's just been a lot of fun just um promoting that working on an ebook as well mm-hmm. called fit from food so Perfect. everything kind of aligns together and does the ebook tell your whole story and then give recipes tell us about the book yeah the, the book it's still i'm still in the writing process i'm not sure when it's exactly it's going to come out later mm-hmm. this year but it's going to go really in depth about my story and my journey and how i got to where i am right now and to the point where it's like there's stuff that i talk about in the book that literally nobody else knows Right. Like I've never told these stories because they're pretty, they're personal, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's real. And it's what a lot of people with these conditions go through, but nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. Tell us one. Nobody wants to talk about how you shit your pants <laughs> in the car because you couldn't hold it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. that's But reality. other people are going through that. And so to see you putting it on the table and putting it out there makes them feel like they're not alone. Yeah. So it's, it gets real. I'm, I'm working on that. And then there'll be recipes as well. And I'm trying to put together a lot of stuff with the, with the food aspect of it and physical fitness as well, combining the, the fit from food theme mm-hmm. along with my story. So it's fun. It's, it's fun just to sit down. I, and I don't consider myself a writer and I don't consider myself a chef or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like an inside joke I have with some of my friends. But just to sit down and just let it flow, just create like raw emotion yeah. off the keyboard. Your story... And everybody that we've had on the podcast that, and we've had a lot of them that are here or are on this journey because they've experienced a personal health crisis and had to make decisions is the most powerful thing that you can share. Yeah. Because it's giving other people hope that are in either in the same position or something similar that you already went through and they have no other resource because the doctors are saying, you got to try this autoimmune suppressant because we don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. We don't know why you, you know what's going on with your body and how to help you. And it's scary to share personal stuff, but it's the most powerful thing you could do. Well, it's scary too because like there's no one thing. Mm-hmm. Like I could have something and another person can. You know, you have right. to find out what works for you and and your body and and what you can handle. Yeah. But find the healing properties in food and yeah. go toward that direction. But that's the that's the biggest thing, right? Is that like people are we and we talk to them all the time. You know, they go they have a health issue, they go to the doctor just as Allison did with her parents, you know, like, can food help them? No. Well, no, it can. Mm-hmm. It actually can. And you've got to find what's, what works for you. And a lot of people are looking toward, not, I don't, I don't want to say alternative medicine because I don't think that's not the right thing, but I was talking to, to one of my friends and, and his wife was suffering from like just really bad cramps every mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. And she started using essential oils. Ooh, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, pepper, he's peppermint. like, I don't know. <laughs> peppermint is supposed to help with pain, and I've I've had personal experience with that oil with pain. Once I rubbed oh. peppermint all over my temples and all over my stomach, and I was burning. No, we're, we're not talking a half a half a bottle to <laughs> one drop. I didn't know this was like. 15 years ago, but I didn't know how potent they're it potent. Was. They actually can melt the ones that I use. They're completely therapeutic, no filler oils. 
the person that I learned about them from put it on styrofoam and it melts styrofoam because mm-hmm. they're that potent. Wow. Holy moly. Yes, but they're okay on your skin as long as they're in moderation. Okay, Susie, your assignment <laughs> is to figure out how to heal cramps with essential oils and come back and tell us. <laughs> so I need do. to know. Sorry, Vince, we'll I do. need to know. <laughs> got it. I got my assignment. <laughs> the only thing... Just side note that I've found that works on cramps is to be on a juice cleanse when I'm having my period. Calcium. Haven't we talked about calcium before? It does. I have found nothing else that works. But I, if you, you think it works, back. I'll try We're it. getting into this bit. <laughs> I was like, I'm taking a back seat Are you here. happy you're I, here? I, I, I know where my role is. It's Let's not, talk this is about little cramps. This is my head right here. You brought it up, baby. <laughs> I know. I know. I love getting my nutrients from food, but I also take supplements. And, mm-hmm. I, and my favorite aunt was like, are you taking enough calcium? Because calcium is supposed to relieve pain. Okay, good. And when I started taking a chewable calcium tablet right before mm-hmm. my lady time, um, <laughs> it was remarkable how different it was. And I was okay. like, oh my God. And I didn't think I was low in calcium, but maybe I or maybe I was, you know? So good let's, to try, know. let's start with that. I'll try that. All right. Calcium and essential oils. Yeah. Cool. Well, calcium is very tied into your nervous system. Your nervous system needs a lot of nutrients to function. And if you're lacking in those nutrients, it's going to kind of wreak havoc. Hmm. So that's where the pain comes from. There's a sodium potassium ion. I'm going, I'm so nerd. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sodium, sodium potassium ion channels in your actual nerve cells, but then you also need other minerals for your nervous system to function. I'm done. Wow. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm like, whoa. I feel like I should be taking notes this whole time. I used to I used to want to be a doctor. I need to interview you. <laughs> I used to want to be a doctor, so I used to read a lot. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. But that's why but that's why I'm always talking about salt. Like we need salt. I know. But there's we need certain minerals and they're not in processed foods. And they have to be from plants that are in proper soil. So yeah. minerals come from the soil. If mm-hmm. the, you know, if they're coming from non-organic, over-processed yeah. or over over farmed dirt, sprayed, you're not going to get your minerals, and yeah. then you're going to have pain, and then you take an Advil instead of taking yep. your calcium. Yeah. Yeah. Biodynamic and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I want to go back to what you were saying, Susie, about Vince's story and how powerful people's stories are to transform. And I think this is an important point because, for example, I was just at this wonderful conference with Gabrielle Bernstein. And what she brought up about telling your story is people say, Gabby, I'm not a writer. I can't write like you. Gabby, I'm not a speaker. I can't speak like you. And she said, if you have a story, you are a writer. If you have a story, you are a speaker. If you have a story, you are anything you want to be because your message is valuable to somebody else. Yeah. And so by sharing our, it's our, our stories are our gifts. As hard as it was for you to go through ulcerative colitis, as hard as it is for all of us to go through our pain and struggles, It is there for a reason. It is there for us to transform it and help others, right? And so I think that's just really important to be able to say, I'm grateful for this. I have a question for Vince. Vince, have you heard of The Artist's Way? Mm -hmm. That that sounds really familiar. Julia Cameron? Yeah. She also, so I did her, I did that book years ago when I was in theater school. Is that, yeah, it is Julia Cameron. I'm like, I think I have, no, I don't have it with me. She also wrote a book called The Right to Write. Mm Mm-hmm. The right R I G H T to W R I T E. It is so good. If you're hitting any kind of walls with your writing, go read that book. It's broken down really simply. It's like three pages per topic. And she talks, she is so awesome. She was actually married to Martin Scorsese mm. and got divorced. She had a, a kid with him, but she's a screenwriter. She's a writer. She's a poet. Um, she's Phenomenal. The right? I'm going to write that down. It's really good. Write, right? Right. Right. You, right, got, you right got to write, write to write. write. Yeah, I'm going to write. <laughs> but that every, down. anybody listening, too, if you've ever wanted to write, if you are a writer, I'm a writer. She um, just finished her screenplay. I just Food finished Heals my Nation. first screenplay. Yeah. Well, yeah. well the, first, awesome. the first draft, anyway. It's, it's in process. But it took me, to be honest, you know, I was an actor first. That was always the art that drew me in. And then writing. I've been writing throughout my life. I've journaled. I did The Artist's Way. She, in The Artist's Way, she talks about morning pages. Have you heard of that? Mm-hmm. So morning pages are, if you are a writer, you want to be a writer, or even just an artist in general, that you get up, the first thing you do, or maybe you have your coffee or your tea, but then the first thing you do is you get your journal or your notebook and you write three pages longhand of whatever. And it's just whatever's in your head, your dreams, your fears, 
what you had for breakfast. If you're stuck, you go, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, whatever it is. And it's literally like purging on the page. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it gets you used to writing and it gives you permission to write whatever is coming. And then what's so brilliant about Julia's book, and I'm actually half, I haven't even finished it and I'm talking about it. And someone gave it to me years ago is that she's, she talks about how she's coached and mentored different writers. And she talks about how she works and how she thinks that, how do I say this? That it's not, she doesn't plan everything out when she's writing. And I used to, that used to get me stuck. You have to have a plan. You have to know, you have to (laughs) sing it. You, You have to know what you're doing if, you know, and then, you know, I get stuck in my head too. It took me many years to finish this screenplay. Mm-hmm. And I've written other things, but it is a phenomenal book. I can't recommend it highly enough. And and I'm just at the point where she's talking about like spiritual connection and and she kind of ties it all together. It's um it's just a wonderful resource. And so if you're saying, you know, I'm not a writer, but I'm gonna write a book, read her book. Because it will get you through and it'll give you it will give you permission to go forth and just and Allison's right, like about writing. <laughs> There's a lot of write right now. <laughs> so much write to write. Well, you know, we're all storytellers. Like if you go back to, and I believe me, I've researched this and like, you know, had to give myself permission to tell the story I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we're all storytellers. And before we even had written word, yeah. we would sit around fires and tell stories to entertain each other. Oh, now we yeah. do it with movies or we do it with plays, or we do it with books, but it's still the same thing. And if you know how to speak, and you have a story to tell and something to share, then you're a writer. I'm fascinated with storytellers lately. I've been reading about just and watching, especially like on YouTube, mm. like Casey Neistat. He mm-hmm. is like the ultimate storyteller who does a daily vlog. To yeah. me, it's insane. I yeah. don't know him. I have to look him up. Oh. Casey Neistat? Yeah. Like nice tat. Nice tat. But that's like, it's nice tat, but that's how he says it. But to well, remember his name. You should look up um, the what he started with was the Nike commercial. Do you know yeah. that story? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I guess Nike gave him, I don't know how much money to yeah, do a commercial. Yeah, they gave him like X amount of dollars to make three commercials. Yeah. It was his contract. And he did the first two. And he was working on the third one. It was him and his buddy. And he basically told his friend, like, stop everything. We're going to do something else. We're going to tour the world. With the money and the budget. On Nike's dime. On Nike's dime. <laughs> make the video until we're done. And so he calls Nike. I, he was on a podcast I listened to. I forget, I think it may have. I forget which one it was. And he was telling about this. So mm-hmm. he's on a speakerphone with like Nike executives. And they're like, Casey, don't screw me. And he goes, I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> so basically he took the money and he had an assistant. Basically, he's, he'd call her up. Okay, I want to go to China. And they Book the flight and he go to China. Okay, I want to go. And he to was like filming there? Africa. No, and he he had his, all his gear, so he's filming this right. whole trip. Right. right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it and he's a movie producer. Yeah. So he knows the angles. He knows the shots. He he's probably thinking how it's gonna look when it's edited already. Yeah. Yeah. But he has the mind for that. Yeah. But the, and it was, I don't know if it still is, but it was the most watched video on Nike's YouTube channel. Wow. And it wasn't even like one of their formal like commercials or anything. And he didn't have a plan before he went. He was just like, I'm going to go there and I'm going to go there. And yeah. yeah. It's one of the original, screw you. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the original like viral videos, I yeah. think. It was, it was, it's just, it's an awesome And it video. probably got them so much more out of the money oh. they spent than they could have dreamed. Yeah. Well, it helped turn Nike, I think, into more of a lifestyle brand, you know? Exactly. You know, and Nike's whole thing is just do it. And doesn't it, it gives you a feeling of yes. That just would have thinking been, about it because that, of that advertising. That would have been great if that was his response. Like, don't screw me. And he's like, I'm not gonna. But I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> oh man. That was so funny. Yeah, it was it, so it's like just watching people like that. They just it's so much inspiration to see what they're doing, how they're telling their story yeah, yeah. every day. And just learning from that. Yeah. It's just it's just fun. You know, storytelling, like you said, it's it's an art form. Yeah, man. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. (laughs) All right. We'll be back with Vince Leah about how to create healthy vegan meals. 
Today's show is sponsored by the Global Healing Center. You know them. We talk about them all the time. You know that all their products are organic, are free of GMOs, use no toxic ingredients, are eco-friendly. And you know that I'm obsessed with their Parfait Massage. And I'm obsessed with their Aqua Spirit Refreshing Spray. And you know we scored a discount code for you to get 20% off of their products. Yep. Use coupon code FOODHEALS to get 20% off plus free shipping on your purchase at Global Healing center.com you are listening to the food hills podcast make sure to subscribe rate and review us on itunes all right food hills nation we're back with vince when vince made the transition to veganism he became aware of just how many unhealthy vegan options are out there like oreos potato chips you know there's a lot He wanted to live a healthy vegan life with minimal processed foods so that he could make these great Italian meals, but with fresh vegetables and nut cheeses that really can rival any classic dish. Wow, that's making my mouth water. I know. But can you tell our listeners about, you know, how to create some healthy, easy vegan meals? And we see you on your videos and on Snapchat and you're taking your friends to like try these vegan restaurants. Yeah. So let's talk about that. And then, you know, what is their reaction? Do they like it? And how can you even get people to eat healthy meals? Well, a lot of times, the first restaurant I take people to, sometimes I'm not going to give them like the healthiest vegan food. Yeah, because you want to still slow, like it. You know, they're, like, they're going to be like, I don't like this kale salad with this nasty dressing. It's like, no. <laughs> but yeah, fire I mean, taste. Yeah, but honestly, I have taken them to some healthy restaurants now that I think about it. And... They'll usually love it. I mean, I usually have gone to the restaurants before. I mean, I've been to most vegan restaurants in LA. Yeah. And so I'll know, they'll say, they don't know what to order. So I'll order some stuff and I'll take them to have like vegan burgers, sometimes vegan pulled pork, mm-hmm. not pulled pork, but jackfruit. Yeah. Sandwiches, some salads, some tacos, raw tacos have been like, honestly, one of the biggest hits. Nice. Just raw vegan tacos. And do you make them or you take them somewhere? I'll usually take them to restaurants. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll invite people over mm-hmm. and I'll have some at the house. Yeah. And, and they're just usually blown away because they're expecting a salad, fruits and veggies. Yeah. Like, they don't understand how diverse and how good vegan food can taste and how creative you can be. Yeah. With different types of nuts or, or soy products or stuff like that. And spices. Yeah. And dressings. I mean, so- it's it's like when you, when you do a barbecue and you're cooking. I used to love doing a barbecue growing up. Like yeah. I'd invite people over to the house. And I still like to do that. I just barbecue different food now. Mm -hmm. But once you master the taste and the sauce and the spices, that's what makes that piece of meat taste good. It's the flavor. Mm -hmm. We'll just take that flavor and put it on something else. Yeah. Put it on tempeh. Put it on tofu. Put it on a um, portobello mushroom. Zucchini. Yeah. And anything. (laughs) Fire it on the grill. Like I do grilled portobello mushrooms all the time. Nice. I did a, a video on it. There's a post on my website. I mean, it's a simple recipe. You just throw a few ingredients together, wix it up, and just let the mushrooms soak it and just throw them on the grill like like you would any other thing you're barbecuing. Yeah. So what's a good barbecue sauce recipe that's vegan and healthy? The one I like is it's a, it's kind of like a teriyaki kind of flavor, mm. but I use soy sauce, coconut nectar, balsamic vinegar. I usually put either some safflower oil or high heat oil because mm-hmm. I'm going to put on the barbecue. It's, it's good to have that. It's just a few ingredients. And you just whisk it up. Do you nice. know what I've been obsessed with lately? What? Kale Caesar salads made with nutritional yeast yes. and lime juice. Yes. Obsessed. It's almost like my body craves it. I'm like, was I low in B vitamins? Nutritional I- yeast is so good. Yeah. And at first, when I first bought it, not when I've had it, because I've had it with like prepared raw vegan cow mm-hmm. salad uh, cow, cow Caesars. Like, I was like, this is amazing. I want to make this at home. <laughs> and then I bought it and I ate it at home and I'm like, no, it's not the same. <laughs> but I figured it out and it's so t- – I'm obsessed with it. You know what I've been doing a lot lately is – because I was doing a ton of this, the kale salads with the dressings and I wanted something different. And I didn't – I looked in the fridge and I had some hummus. So I was like, hmm. Well, hummus kind of would go good with kind of like a Greek, almost like a spinach and kale salad. Mm-hmm. So I take the hummus out and I put it in like a little mini food processor, one of those choppers. And I'll literally just throw in some lemon juice mm-hmm. and mix it up and use that as a dressing. And if you want it sweeter, you could add like some maple syrup or something. And I just usually and I mix that in with the salad. So you're getting hummus, which is a great source of protein, in with the salad. It's simple. Yum. It's easy. 
It takes literally two hungry. minutes. Thanks. I know. It's about that time. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite restaurant in LA that's vegan? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. I know. There's so many that's good ones. One. And there's so many new ones. They're popping up all the time. Yeah. Like by Chloe. Oh, oh. my God. Oh my that God. place is good. I was just at the New York one this weekend. It's so How was it? So good. Really? So good. Yeah. That's like I think the first place I'm gonna go when I get off the plane in New York is yeah. a vegan restaurant. And yeah. hers is up there. I've heard so many great things. The one in LA just opened up. Yeah, exactly. That's why I brought it up. The other one I was obsessed with while I was there. So I was at a conference and on my walk to the conference was a place called Blossom. And there's multiple locations and it's kind of like... You were uh, Snapchatting about that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I saw that. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's so good. They have these smoothies and these milkshakes that are to die for. I got so many meals there. They have bowls. It is so good. If you go to New York, try Blossom. It's fast. It's easy. It's not like a restaurant. Restaurant. It's more like... To go. Yeah, it's to go. But you can sit at the counter like or you can but there's multiple ones so i think one of them might be a sit down but the one that i was passing every day was kind of like quick food but it was so good perfect yeah nice okay what's your favorite restaurant in la i interrupted you i i don't know if i could pick a favorite i mean i gosh what are some of your favorites i mean just from a location wise i go to sun cafe a lot oh that is one of the best yeah so there's sun cafe is to die for they have the good. best smoothies yes that mint chocolate, mint chocolate. smoothie chocolate. It mm. is. There is no one else that can make it like that. I've tried to recreate it. I can't do it. It is so good. It's hard. I don't know how they it's do the it. It's the balance of the ingredients. I've tried to myself. Yeah. I was like, there are the ingredients. I can make this. Yeah. Whew, that's a tough one. They're probably lying about the ingredients. They're like, and the secret <laughs> is cinnamon. But we're not going to put that in there. <laughs> but I like that. So Sun Cafe. I mean, there's a lot of real food dailies mm-hmm. all over the place. Those are pretty good. Man. I mean, by Chloe. I was impressed. So good. I was impressed. The cupcakes there. Yeah, to die for. Wow. I mean, there's a reason she won Cupcake Wars. Yep. And that's how she really got her status as like a chef, I think. Yeah. She was from Cupcake Wars. Now she has books and restaurants and she's doing great. And gosh, I mean, I'm trying to think where else do. Okay. Where have you done your most interesting video? Oh, you mean taking somebody? Organics. Okay. Why? Uh, just because you can get like a, a a Big Mac version, uh huh. You know, it- so you take a guy there who's. I took my friends there for a vegan Big Mac, and they couldn't believe it was vegan. Mm-hmm. Like What's in a vegan Big Mac? I'm not sure what they use there, <laughs> but you didn't know what you were eating. Like, what did they use? Did they use a mushroom portobello? No, no, no. It's it's it has the look and feel of a regular meat patty. So oh, like, so it's like a like garden type of meat. Okay. No, nah, well, they, I think they make their own. Yeah, I'm just I can't remember. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on what maybe they like a quinoa burger or something. Use black bean. Could be black bean over there. I'm not sure, but Chloe has a burger too that I didn't try when I was there. It's called the classic. That next time I'm there, I'm getting the classic. <laughs> like everybody was there saying, she has beet ketchup. Oh. Yeah, the beet ketchup is good. I haven't had the burger, though. What did you have when you went there? This weekend, I had the mac and cheese, and then I had, it was like a pasta quinoa bowl, and then what else did I have? Oh, with the shiitake uh, bacon. Yes. Oh. It was hungry. so good. Oh, my I'm God. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got something. Oh, I got a salad to go. I think it was a- The taco salad? No. I think it was like a peanut buttery salad. Yeah, yeah. It was like peanut saucy salad. It was oh. so good. Now I'm getting hungry. I know. It's the best. I got to (laughs) go. Okay. All right. Thanks for being here. (laughs) Okay. So going back to the branding and changing your brand, what is new about your brand today that you didn't have before? We know you have t-shirts. We know you've changed your name. What's different? I mean, I just think you're going to see an overall feel. I mean, a lot of the recipes are still the same, Mm -hmm. but it's really just focusing on not necessarily getting everybody to become vegan it's just getting everybody to eat healthier to be more active Mm -hmm. and incorporate fitness as well as food into their life and i think people don't realize how easy it is to be more fit you know it's like okay i'm at a desk all day or i'll walk well i started using a fitbit and you just Mm -hmm. track your steps so you there's things you could do during the course of your day you know park a little farther Mm -hmm. you know get some extra steps walk around stairs take the stairs exactly so just showing people how easy it is to do that as well as as the food aspect of things just to be fit and just 
you're look, not everybody's gonna have I don't have a six pack and this and that, but doesn't mean you can't eat healthier and be more active and enjoy your life at the same time. Yeah, I love parking far away as long as I'm not in heels. But <laughs> I have that problem too. It's a nightmare. Let I know, you. right, Fitz? Oh. Gosh. <laughs> But I love parking far away because I know that I'm going to get my steps in. And I actually don't have the Fitbit. Well, I have it somewhere in my house, but I like stopped using it. <laughs> but I still have it in my head, like get your steps in, get your steps in. And so on days when I have more freedom, I absolutely get them in. But on days when I'm running from meeting to meeting or place to place or just at an office or whatever, and I'm not getting them in, I make a point of like, okay, if I'm at an office, I'm not going to call someone. I'm going to go take a walk to their desk. You know, just little things like that to try to get the steps in. And yes, taking the stairs as well. As well. But it's like, women in our heels man you can't take as many steps you have to make an extra effort in the morning and the evening <laughs> well you know what i started doing is the morning yeah when i first started incorporating more fitness mm-hmm. my back was hor- i mean it still is it's, it's a process mm. but my flexibility was absolute zero which explains why i always ended up pulling my back about a month into a workout mm. because i wasn't doing it properly it wasn't arched yeah and i had no support so I actually started working with someone and he's like, you need to go see this with this lady here. And she started stretching out my back. That also has to do with a lot of core strength, though, and belly, yes. belly strength. Oh, so yeah. like, I don't I don't know if people notice know that, but like people and I've had a bad low back since I was a teenager through an injury. But when I realized that, like when I have a tight core, which I believe also helps your digestion, dig- yeah. digestion, it allows your back to relax. It's not doing your 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 tor- core is supposed to be tighter so that your back can relax and do its job, and which do is its to thing. extend your spine and your and your belly is supposed mm-hmm. to flex your spine yeah, rather than rounding and causing injury because you're putting strain on the back. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's and, the whole thing in yoga is you have flat back. Yeah, I need to do a little. I probably need to do more. Yoga. I took the best restorative class today, you guys. I feel Where? like a million bucks at Equinox in West LA. Mm. I heard that's pretty cool. It's amazing. Oh, amazing. Listen, first of all, in the morning I went there and they have this whole cafe area. It's like your own personal office slash coffee shop. You shot. You snapped about that one too. I did. I'm. You I'm did. doing good he's, on Snapchat. He's one of your snappers. I know. He's my friend. We See? we watch each other. We watch each other. Yeah. Snaps. Come we on, know what's Suze. Going down. Come on, Suze. You got to get on there. No. Come on. <laughs> She's so anti-social media. Well, I just I like my privacy. I know, but you can just put pictures. You don't have to do videos. You can just put pictures of like. Hey, I'm doing this. But cool you thing. can decide what you want to share. Yeah, you it's don't have to like share everything. Camera, no, like... but then I get in my head like, who's watching it? Do I? Does is anyone watching it? Like, well, know. on Snapchat, you see exactly who's watching it, so you wow. can tailor your content. You're like, this person's watching all the time, so I'm going to give them this. Like my friend who I was fighting about, she thinks dairy does your body good. I did a whole thing about dairy so that she would see it because I know she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and she's listening she's like, Watch right now. This. <laughs> no, she doesn't know what a podcast is. She goes, Allie, what the. Fuck? It's a podcast. <laughs> but she See, at least I know snaps. what a podcast is. I, I mean, not Snapchat, but I know what a podcast is. <laughs> well, you have to. And I can record job. one. <laughs> <laughs> is that too sassy? I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. But yes, yoga is amazing. That gym is to die for. It's ridiculous. It's like a little mall in there. They have a hair salon. They have a massage studio. They have everything you could nice. ever want. Yeah. But I, I worked all morning there and then I went to class and then I took a luxury. Then I sat in the hot tub and then I took a luxurious shower and then I came here to meet you fabulous Working people. hard. Well, you know, you know what I did for the, the <laughs> first <laughs> I did work hard. I worked all I morning. I know. You work your ass off. I know. <laughs> Thank you. For the first time, I did acro. Oh, yeah? Yeah. With the like cool. silk ribbons? No, it wasn't like a formal like class or anything, but or I did tra- it. Not I did trapeze? It, I did it once and I'm a, I am I'm need to do it again. But I know I need to get my flexibility in line before yeah. I do it again. Yeah. But I was actually over at, I was at Expo West. Mm-hmm. And have you heard of Modern, uh, modern Tarzan? Mm-mm. <laughs> Check this guy out. Wait, wasn't I at Expo West with you? I don't, but it was like later. It was at one of those um, parties afterwards. Oh, yeah. And so I was, he he was like climbing the like in the hallway of the hotel. Nah. And he's like climbing the <laughs> wall, right? And he goes, check this out. And he shows me it his, on his iPhone, like he filmed it, and he just like and he like <gasps> goes up, and he comes down. And so I see him later, and I was like, w- w- what do you do? I'm like curious. He goes, I'm a ninja. <laughs> I was like, what? And he was on American Ninja Warrior. Okay. And the guy is just like. But insane. how does he do that? He, I mean, that's what he trains. He's attaching to the wall like Spider Man. Well, yeah, like from the hallway, from like end to end, right? Yeah. So you put both hands so on the wall. So it's rock climbing without rocks. It's just walls. Yeah. So <gasps> he like, 
Like, he could hang sideways on stuff. He has a YouTube channel. Oh, my God. Cool. I mean... I have a personal story about this. Okay. Oh, so wow. That, well, no, not him. <laughs> <laughs> I dated my I know, that's, I know, that's where my mind went. I'm like, no. No. But um, years ago, when I was doing a lot of massage, I went to Hawaii with my boyfriend, and we were on the big island, and we wound up, like, hiking up a little stream and then there was a lava tube and so a lava tube is where you have volcanic rock and then the water has permeated through and created a little stream so it was like a, you know a tube that you walk through to follow the stream up and it was very rough and you had to hold on to the sides and it was slippery and and I started to but I felt confident I was like 25 so I was like whatever <laughs> and I'm walking along and and I'm gripping the rocks and I noticed that my hand strength I was like I feel like spider man right now because my hand because i was doing so much manual massage my oh. hands were so strong and i was like oh my god <laughs> i li- i the had this power. moment i was like this is easy and i was moving along and my boyfriend didn't do that he well he worked with his hands he was a he was actually a designer on design on a dime but but he didn't do what i did and and i was just kicking his butt i was like moving past him and it it is incredible and i and i've always wanted to rock climb or at least maybe bolder, because that experience, like this, and it was just, it was really interesting. And, and so I could imagine that if he was a ninja and was doing that kind of stuff all the time, you develop, it almost seems like superhuman strength or things that most people couldn't do, but it's really just developing the dexterity in your hands and yeah. your forearms to be able to hold your body. Yeah. It is extraordinary. And it, it's not like these guys are like huge. No, muscles, you don't need they to. They are like, like really athletic like tone. I mean, they're. Mm-hmm. Well, that's go, going back to yoga classes. We were talking about yoga classes. Like I've seen guys that are big, like have a lot of muscle. They obviously lift weights, right? And that kind of strength does not help you hold up your body. It may look good, may look hot, it may feel masculine, but it doesn't help you help you hold up your body. What helps you hold up your body is yoga type movements or, yeah. or Pilates or you know or actually rock climbing. That will help develop the strength to hold your own body weight. But big, bigger muscles don't do that. Yeah. They are they they can lift stuff more easily. Yeah. Well, that's what he told me. He goes, "Have you ever done acro?" And I was like, "I've never." So done. what? What was acro? Acro yoga. It's like oh, you... acro yoga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so it, it was on the kind of ribbons or like. It's not. It's it's body weight. So it's like you balance the other person on you. Oh. And so when he asked you that, and he goes. Have you ever done it? I'm like, no, I've never done. I've never done, even done yoga. He goes, oh, you don't need to do. You don't need to know yoga to do acro. And he goes, what other excuse do you have? And I was like, <laughs> well, I, I guess I don't have any. And so we literally, he's like, okay, here's what you're gonna do: take off your shoes. And like, I climb. Like, he sits. So in, like, it was like count- counterweight balancing. Exactly. I get it. So he sits in like this chair pose, and he says, okay, get on my legs. So I climb on his legs, and then you put like one of your feet around his head and then you let go with your so you're balancing your whole body it's with pretty my, sexy fence <laughs> it wasn't meant to be that way no on, i now. know but like <laughs> you have some skills now <laughs> hmm i think i see a rebranding coming <laughs> yes. but it was just like a rush of i don't know for me it was well, like it's challenging what you thought you could you could do right. Yeah, it's changing your actual like limits of what you thought you were capable of. Exactly, and, and it's to the point where it's like I want to do this again. Mm, like, yeah. I'm like I need to do this. I've done a couple of things like that. We learned. I learned it in massage school. It stretches actually. It's much more gentle than what. No, there's no wrapping of a leg around a head. Yeah, but we should do it when we're done with the podcast. I want to see. You. I want to show you something. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is exciting. Or I'll we'll do it with sna- Allison. That, that will not be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually, it feels amazing. Like you use counter, just the same kind of thing, to, but to, stre- to, to stretch more than, as opposed to doing any kind of acrobatics. But it's, yeah. yeah. Well, what I've had to do now is every morning I have a routine where I have to stretch my back out. Mm, so okay. as soon as I do, I, I get up out of bed and I have this thing where it's like, it's one of the first things I do. Do you know what the one of the best stretches you can do for your back is? What? What? Just bending at your waist and hanging. And hanging? That's a yoga position. Yeah, they do in yoga. I mean, they... they, yeah. they That's uh, one yoga position I know I can do. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the... It stretches the backs of your legs, which is connected to your back, and it stretches your back and it stretches your neck. And your hands. And then they... And they're... Yeah. 
and you can hold your elbows. I prefer not to. I just let my arms hang. It's one of the it's one of the easiest yoga positions and one of the best things you can do for your back. Yeah, and it also is good for your organs because every time you go upside down, your organs are able to kind of reset themselves when they come back. So it's really good to keep them moving. That's why people like atrophy because they never they're sitting all day. So to get them up and then upside down, it's like incredibly good for your immune system. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love yoga because I'm not the most flexible person. I probably never will be. I've been through yoga teacher training. I still can't touch my toes with straight legs. Like I'm just built that way. What? But no, seriously. And we'll get um, there. No, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Well, I've been practicing for 10 years and I and I cannot do it with straight legs. I can do it with bent legs, huh. but my, le my you know, I have tight hamstrings. I'm just not built that way. And so what I've learned about myself is the things that I can't do, all the modifications, and you can still have the same yes. feelings of the stretches, but I'm amazing at balance. So every yeah. time we do a balance pose, I'm there for 10 minutes. What's I your, don't fall. I'm just like, you know, tree pose, anything. What's like, your favorite balance? Mine's warrior three. I, that's a good one. Warrior I feel I feel pose. fierce when I can. When yeah, you I do feel it. fierce exactly. You when feel I do so that fierce. is you're standing on one foot and the other leg is behind you straight and then you have your arms, arms out or yeah. straight forward and you it's like it's a power position. Yeah, because you can't think about anything else. You can't think about the stress of your day. You can only think about holding that pose. And as soon as your thoughts wander, you fall. You know, or you come out of balance. And so that's like the most fun or interesting part for me is getting into those balance poses because I can hold those even if I can't touch my toes. You know what I mean? So for me, that's where the power is. And I love that. And I love that it makes me not, it makes you so in the moment that you absolutely can't think about stress. Mm -hmm. You can't think about who's texting, who's Facebooking, who's left you a voicemail. All that comes later, but you can't think about your to-do list. You're completely right. in the moment. And that's what I love the most. I, and I yoga. was joking. One of the things I love about yoga is that and I had to learn this the hard way through some injuries, but is that you're supposed to find where it feels good and a little challenging for you and then stop. You're not competing with anybody else, yeah. nor yourself. You're just, you're in the present moment and you're where you're at. And for me, my yoga practice has gone like this, like a sine wave over the years where sometimes I can do amazing stuff and I can take my leg and I can hold it out with <laughs> my, my hand and stand on one leg. And then other days I also, I'm like, oh, I can't really touch my toes. <laughs> <laughs> I have that every day. <laughs> but you can get, you know, but, but that's the thing is like, I used to dance when I was little and my best friend was like a rubber band. She could, we, when we were stretching out for ballet class, she could take her leg and put it flat up against the wall yeah, and stand yeah. next to it. I could never do that. And yeah. in my head, I was like, I'll never be as flexible as her. I always thought that. Mm -hmm. And for a good long time in yoga, I was like, no, nah, I'm not flexible. And then it's also a, a mindset challenge, I think, too, is like you can do whatever you want to do. It is fascinating. Yoga is fascinating. I'm, I'm seeing a, a vlog here that's going to go on my YouTube channel pretty soon of us going to this yoga studio <laughs> and getting some yoga stuff in. Let's do it. I'm I in. that'd be fun. I yes. love it. All right, Vince, where can everyone find you online, stalk you, follow you? Um, you can find me at vincelia.com. There's a free smoothie guide that you can download. Nice. I love smoothies. have them almost every day. Yes. So I just give a bunch of uh, ingredient options, nutritional information, some recipes. You can find me on YouTube at Vince Lea and Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram at the Vince Lea because Vince Lea was already there. <laughs> that guy in Italy. <laughs> the Vince Lea. Follow him. Food Heals Nation. Do you have a tweetable to leave us with? A tweetable. Something short and sweet. Fit from food. Get fit from food <laughs> with and sweet. Vince yeah. Leah. Yeah. Get fit from food. I like it. All right. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming back. Of course. Anytime. Food Heals Nation, don't forget to join our mailing list so you can get all the juicy details when we launch our Food Heals VIP Club. Yep. Sign up today and we will email you a discount code that you can use to get 20% off anything in the club. The Food Heals VIP Club is a members-only club and holistic lifestyle brand where we will teach you strategies and classes in the fields of nutrition, spirituality, and entrepreneurship. All our favorite things to talk All about. All of our favorite things. <laughs> the Food Heals VIP Club is something we've been working on for a while now, and We've just been putting our hearts and souls into it. It's been really fun and rewarding, and I just can't wait till we launch to bring you all this good stuff. So stay tuned for the launch date, but we are thrilled to bring you classes like how to do a juice cleanse, or if you are looking to add more vegan meals into your life, we're going to give you the perfect vegan meal plan for ultimate health, longevity, and vitality. 
or if you have a health business like we do, we'll teach you the exact strategies we use to get sponsors, how to use affiliate marketing to build your business, how to attract more clients for your coaching business, how to rock the world of social media, and just so much more. And of course, we promise to get a little woo-woo on you and teach you all about energy healing in our manifestation classes and guided meditations, like how to manifest more money, or how to release food cravings, and even how to attract the one. I think we should get woohoo on them. <laughs> <laughs> so go to foodhealsvip.com, sign up today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately.